All right, good afternoon, you physicists. We are going to go through an example on the board. Um, do your best to see it. I know there's a little bit of glare on the board, um, so hopefully it doesn't get in the way of any of the work we're going to do here. I'll do my best to work around it. Um, but this video assignment has two parts, so we're going to do one part together. There's an, essentially an application of the ideas of distance, displacement, and position with the graphs that you've started to create from uh, monitoring the motion of your toy cars. So we're going to do an example together, and then we'll leave you with one to try for tomorrow. Um, so what I'd expect you to bring to class with you tomorrow would be your completed notes from this first part, and then the completed solution for the second part, and we'll have a chance to check that out um, in the coming days. So let's start with the first one. Um, what I have over here is what we're going to call a position time graph. Position is located on the, the y-axis, the time is on the x-axis. And in this scenario, the position goes as high as 6 meters from the origin and as low as negative 6 meters from the origin. The seconds progress up by 1 each time interval. So we're only going to focus on, for this first part, the example of this black line right here. So you should completely ignore the orange line. The orange line is actually part of your homework. So when analyzing scenarios like this, the question you first ask is, what is this motion actually being described? Uh, what does it actually look like? To do that, we're going to try a technique that will help you visualize the motion that objects undergo. And then what we're going to do is basically diagram the motion using a number line. What you have to keep in mind about this motion is that this position axis here is talking about the location of an object in one dimension, so across one line. So you can think of this as like an entire meter stick. These are all points along that meter stick, and so you can talk about the motion of that object anywhere in between there. It's the same thing on a football field if you look at the, sar the yard lines. When we talk about yard lines on a football field, we're only talking about up and down the field. We're not talking about anything along the width. We don't know where the football players are in the width of the field. We can tell where they are along it. So we're talking about one, di one directional motion right now. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to create a number line that represents that idea of the yard lines for the position. And we'll start at 6. We'll go all the way down to negative 6. So to start that off, I'm going to draw a number line that looks like this. I'm putting the origin 0 meters in the center. That relates to this point on the position graph. And then I'm going to go up in the positive direction to four, and six, trying to keep it evenly spaced. So it'd be negative two meters, negative four meters, negative six meters. And what I'm going to do is, with this number line, I'm going to put a dot that represents the position of an object at certain times. So watch carefully. What we do first is look at where is the object at t equals zero. It's located in this example at the origin. And so to represent that over here, I'm going to put a dot under the line. You can do this above or below the line. It's not important which way you do it. But what is important is that you put beside that dot t equals 0 seconds. This tells us that at t equals 0 seconds, this dot was at 0 meters. And then we follow the motion along at 2 seconds. I notice it was at 4 meters. And so at 2 seconds, t equals 2 seconds. The dot is at 4 meters. And so we're starting to get a picture of the motion here in that the object went from here to here along the number line. Uh, if we keep going, 4 seconds, it's continued to stay at a position of 4 meters. And so I'm going to just drop down here and say this is t equals 4 seconds. And then finally, 5 seconds, we're located at a position of 2 meters, which is right here. So I'll place my dot. So what has this done for us? This has given us a picture of what this object did. If I were to trace it literally with a pencil, as if this was a, push, a person on a football field, then what I would see is the person starting here, moving up this way, pausing here for a series of two seconds, and then coming back to this location right here. That's literally the motion that would occur. So what kinds of information can we get from this? Well, a series of questions here are in certain time intervals, what are the distance and displacements for that object? And so we're going to go ahead and answer each of those for this scenario. 
we're going to look at first just 0 to 2 seconds. So 0 to 2 seconds is only this first part of the graph. So the first question, distance. Actually, we're going to do displacement first. Um, the displacement for this object is what happens when we take the difference between where it ends up and where it starts. And so we'll do that calculation here to the side. So delta x equals x final minus x initial, which in this case will be 4 minus 0, or 4 meters. So the displacement in that time interval is 4 meters. That would be the distance it is from where it started. If I ask the question about what is its distance traveled at that point, well, since we only travel it in one direction, it's going to be the same as the displacement was. So this is also 4 meters. All right, let's keep going. Let's go to from 0 to 4 seconds. So that's this interval here to here. Question again, what is the displacement? Well, we can do the computation. But I hope what you see is when I write all of this out, because that final position hasn't changed, the object stays at this location, we're going to end up with the same calculation, so 4 meters for that. And then, again, similarly with the distance, we've traveled this way once, and then we stop there, so total distance traveled in that time frame is also 4 meters. And this last interval, 0 to 5 seconds, takes us the entire length of the graph, and so we can go through the calculation delta x equals xf minus xi. If I haven't made this explicit yet, this is the final position, x sub f, and the uh, initial position, x sub i. When we plug in our values for this, we get the final position is 2 minus, it's located right here, the initial position was 0, and so the displacement in this case is 2 meters. Now you might ask yourself, well, why is that the case? Well, remember, Distance is how far you are from where you start. So we started at zero meters, we walked this way, we stayed there for a little bit, and then we walked back the other way in that last second, ending at two meters. So the distance between where we start and where we finish is only two meters. Distance, though, we have to consider the entire path of travel of this object, because in the first four seconds, the object went four meters, and you can't reduce your distance traveled by walking backwards. Same thing, your car doesn't... Um, remove miles from the odometer after you trace back your steps at the end of the day, it just continues to add them on. And so we'll do the same thing here by saying in the first uh, four seconds, we know it traveled four meters, and then we ask ourselves, well, in that last additional second, how far did it go? We can see here it went from four down to two, in the diagram, four down to two, which means it traveled two meters this way, so our total distance traveled for that last part will be six meters. So, a couple tools here that you're going to become familiar with using. One is, of course, the position time graph. This will become your best friend over time, um, one that we'll use a lot. This is what we call a graphical representation of motion. This picture here is what we're going to refer to as a diagrammatical uh, way of demonstrating motion. And then these are some calculations that allow us to understand what was the motion actually like. So, for your homework this evening, you're going to try all of this for a different line. So this position time graph, except now with the orange line, I would like for you to first do the diagrammatical representation with all of the dots. Second, for each time interval, t0 to 2, 0 to 4, 0 to 5, find the distance and displacement for each one. Um, so you should have those two problems both completed for uh, class tomorrow when you bring them in. Uh, again, call or text or email if you have any questions.